single-staged bilateral hip arthroscopies. The following video highlights key steps for simultaneous or single-staged bilateral hip arthroscopies learned from almost a decade of experience. Enabling factors include rapid surgery time and low traction times, supine positioning and bilateral mobile leg spars, and postoperative immediate weight bearing as tolerated protocols. Supine hip arthroscopy allows rapid transition between hips. In this case, the right hip is the first operative hip. The post is lateralized towards that hip and positioning of the left lower extremity is placed in an abducted position for counter traction and the right lower extremity is placed in 10 degrees flexion, 20 degrees abduction and moderate internal rotation. The C arm is positioned between the legs rather than coming from the contralateral side. The fluoroscopic template is drawn on the floating monitor screen with an erasable marking pen. Here is the supine arthroscopic setup for the right hip after sterile draping. Note at the head of the bed the adjacent arthroscopic and fluoroscopic monitors, the latter for real-time on-demand spot imaging. Hip distraction is applied for initial central compartment access as well as initial central compartment diagnostic and therapeutic work. To minimize traction time, arthroscopic acetabuloplasty using fluoroscopic templating is performed without hip distraction. Arthroscopic drilling of all anchor sites is performed without hip distraction. Note that I'm keeping the drill parallel to the floor to avoid anterior rim iatrogenic joint penetration. Hip traction is not reapplied until time to pass sutures through or around the labrum. Once arthroscopic labral refixation or reconstruction is performed, traction is released to confirm the labral fluid seal as well as to perform femoroplasty. Cam decompression is performed through the small vertically oblique capsulotomy connecting the anterior lateral and modified mid anterior portals. Moving the hip into position so it can be viewed and treated through the small capsular window is key. The C-arm is then removed away from the operative field to allow unobstructed arthroscopic dynamic testing for confirmation of eradication of ongoing femoral acetabular impingement. The C-arm is then repositioned to obtain a modified dunlateral view to confirm radiographic anterior offset restoration. Another key is to inject the operative hip with ropivacaine and 10 milligrams of Duramorph. Transition between hips occurs once sterile dressings are applied to the first operative hip. The supine position enables rapid transition between operative hips. We prefer to redrape the patient and placing the operative leg in a frog leg position facilitates moving the groin pose towards the operative hip. The lower extremities and floating monitors are then repositioned into mirror images of that used for the first hip. The C-arm device is rapidly deployed from the position between the legs and contralateral hip arthroscopy is performed via small capsulotomy with attention to traction limited to central compartment work as well as during labral suture passage. Once dynamic testing confirms eradication of ongoing impingement, and fluoroscopic modified done view confirms restoration of the anterior offset. Then the hip is injected with ropivacaine and morphine, followed by routine closure and dressing. Following outpatient surgery, patients are initiated on an immediate weight bearing as tolerated protocol, which has been shown to be safe and effective. This is the same protocol that we use for ipsilateral hip arthroscopy. Single-staged bilateral hip arthroscopy is a feasible option for select surgeons with attractive benefits in select patients. Thank you.